This is a hoverboard, probably one of the most pointless electric rides ever made, but not for long. In this video, I'm combining its two motors into one wide go-kart tire to unleash double their power and unlock full potential for my future project. I'm kicking things off by tearing this hoverboard down to its core. Every single component is coming out because I'm reusing both motors as all the electronics later. The motor needs to be cracked open by loosening six bolts and with a bit of force wiggle the internal rotor out. Those windings were held crazy strong with the internal magnets, so be ready to use some muscles. Now we can ditch the rubber tires off and get metal rims ready for their new life as a single wheel. The tire I'm using is an 11 by 7.1 by 5 inches go-kart tire, beefy and built for traction on the road. And hey, call it a happy coincidence, but the motors I'm using are also 5 inches in diameter. So once we remove the slip, we should get a perfect fit. I could use an angle grinder with an abrasive disc, but I had a rare chance to use a friend's metal lathe, and I wasn't about to pass that up. After a few passes, the surface was even. But while I was at it, I took one more light pass across whole area just to make it cleaner and more uniform. Now, since we got two motors and just one tire, we need to bond the motors together using some sturdy hardware and a few new holes. To keep everything aligned properly, I designed and 3D printed a simple template. After marking everything precisely, I used the drill press to make the holes, then enlarge them from the other side. While I was at the drill press, I also modified one of the motor cover mounting holes to accept the air valve. I enlarged and tapped it, then drilled one final hole to give access to the tire's internal air chamber. Here's the valve I'm using. It's slim, long, and it's called a Presta valve, also known as a French valve. Compared side by side with the standard car tire valve, the size difference is pretty obvious. I went with the Presta valve because it is longer slimmer and has a better threaded surface to mount in the rim. A bit of automotive sealant and it's good to go. Threads hold it in place and the sealant keeps the air tight. To connect two parts with some space in between, I jumped into Fusion 360 and designed a simple but strong spacer. Then I dropped it into Bamboo Studio and tweaked the settings. For strength, I choose PETG filament bump the perimeters count and set the infill to a solid 50%, just like that. A few clicks later, my Bamboo Lab A1 printer got a job over Wi-Fi and started printing. I've had this printer for almost a year now and honestly, it is ridiculously easy to get high quality prints without messing with calibrations, bed leveling or extrusion flow. It takes care of all of that for you. And for some prints, I haven't even had to touch a computer. I've been doing it all on my phone. They've got their own app where people upload their designs and models. And you can just scroll through, pick up what you want and hit print. The printer itself is fast. It has built-in camera and thanks to the EMS light add-on, you can print up to four different colors at once. Now, to be fair, I usually stick to a single color prints like most people, but I keep four different filaments loaded in the EMS so I can switch materials on the fly without having to stop or reload anything. It's hard to think of a more capable setup at this price point. Having a 3D printer in the workshop just unlocks a whole new level of problem solving. It completely changed the way I work and how I tackle fabrication challenges. I'm no longer sketching out templates on paper or, as in this case, spending forever measuring and marking drill holes. Now it's just a quick 5 minutes modal infusion and straight to the printer. It's insanely precise, super quick and way less hassle. Speaking of hassle, I couldn't find long M6 bolts with ultra low heads, so I made my own from M6 threaded rods and furniture connector nuts. A drop of blue thread locker keeps the nuts in place and turns it in a functional bolt. Six attempts later, the hardware was ready. I used the same automotive sealant to create an airtight seal between the inside and outside of the motor housing. To hold up the bolts, the 3D printer came to the rescue again. A simple holder keeps all bolts in place while I secure the nuts on the other side. 
a nice bit of sealant confirmed the airtight seal. Once everything was aligned on the angle iron, I tightened the nuts. With the dual motor hub solid and straight, I reassembled one of the motors. Watch your fingers here! Those magnets are no joke. The side motor cover needs to seal the tire air inside, but the lip wasn't wide enough. So I made a 5mm thick aluminum ring to enlarge the contact area. I originally considered 3D printing this, but after a few tests I went with aluminum for extra rigidity. Pretty much every project I do involves 3D printed parts, and this one's no different. Here's a whole pile of prints that didn't make it into the final version. Prototyping is messy, but here's the good news. I'll be sharing all the final print files on Maker World. You'll be able to download everything easily, and I'll even include personalized files for A1 printer. You can send them straight to the print from your browser or your phone. Seriously, how cool is that? If you've been thinking about getting into 3D printing, now's the time. The A1 is hands down the best bang for your buck printer out there. I'll drop a link in the description if you want to check it out. Once the ring was installed and sealed, the dual motor hub was ready to mount into the tire. With some tire paste applied, it slid in easily. To mount the second motor, I have to gain some space first. Then install an aluminum ring, motor, cover, and finally seal it. Luckily, go-kart tires are super manageable. With a few clamps, I got easy access to everything I needed. To inflate the tire, I slightly modified a regular tire inflation nozzle and added a small o-ring for a better seal. Then press the nozzle against the surface and turned the compressor on. The tire volume is not that big, so this small compressor handled the task very fast. And due to the valve design, the small nut should be lightly tightened after inflation. And here we have it. Two electric motors inside a single go-kart tire. To be honest, it looks kind of like a beast. The air is sealed tightly around the perimeter of the tire and we are not using any inner tube. I can control the air pressure through the valve by releasing a bit or pumping more in. This is a fully functional tubeless tire solution. Why did I make it? I'm going to use it in my next electric ride project. Curious? Press subscribe so you don't miss that upcoming video. And see you soon! Bye!